Hi guys. So I wanted to read a story about the solar system. I thought this book was really helpful in talking about some of your vocab that I mentioned in the first video, and then just some of the specific planets that we talked about. So we just did a mnemonic because we wanted to talk about the order of the planets from the sun. So this planet, uh, or this story, solar system book about the planets is really cool. So if you guys would follow along, you might learn something new. So solar system. So we live on a spinning revolving planet called Earth. Earth belongs to a very large family of nine planets and more than 90 moons. So it says nine planets, even though we're talking about eight planets because Pluto used to be considered one of the planets of the solar system. But like I mentioned in the vocab video, Pluto is actually a dwarf planet. So it's a lot smaller, so it's no longer considered one of the planets of the solar system, even though it's technically in the solar system. At the center of this family is the sun. So at the very center is your sun. The entire family is known as the solar system. At night, we see thousands of stars. During the day, we only see one, the sun. The sun is a star. The sun looks much larger and brighter than the night stars because it is, a million, it is a million times closer to us than the stars we see at night. So the sun is so much closer to Earth, we see it all the time, but we don't necessarily see the stars as close. The sun is the center of the solar system. It is very big. If it were hollow, you could fit more than one million Earths inside the sun. So that's how big the sun is. The sun has gravity, another vocab word. Gravity is a force that attracts all objects to one another. The sun's gravity pulls on the planet and the moons. Gravity makes the planets and the moons travel around the sun. The follow, they follow paths called orbits, another vocab word. The sun's gravity keeps the solar system together. The sun is very hot. It is made of gas deep inside Hydrogen gas is squeezed and heated to 15 million degrees Fahrenheit. It is turned into helium gas. When this happens, energy is released. It flows out from the sun as light and heat. This is what we see and feel. Mercury, first planet from the sun. That's what Mercury looks like. Mercury is one of the smallest planets. Fun fact to know, you can write it in your workbook. It is closest to the sun. This makes Mercury very hot. The side of Mercury facing the sun gets twice as hot as a kitchen oven, so about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. The dark side is three times colder than Antarctica in winter. So one side is really hot and one side is super cold. Mercury is a rocky planet. It doesn't have air. The air around a planet is also called an atmosphere. Mercury's surface looks like the surface of Earth's moon. There are thousands of bowl-shaped holes called craters. These craters were made when space rocks smashed into Mercury. So Mercury looks a lot like the moon. Kind of cool. Venus, a very pretty planet in my opinion. I think it looks really cool. So Venus is the second planet from the sun. It is nearly as large as Earth. Venus is always covered with white clouds. The air around Venus is poisonous. The clouds are made of tiny drops of acid. The sun's heat passes through the clouds and is trapped at the surface. Trapped heat makes Venus the hottest planet. So hottest planet is Venus, Mercury is the coldest planet. Metals like lead and zinc would melt on its surface. Venus is made of rock that comes from volcanoes, something very interesting that you guys can add on your worksheet if you want. The surface is covered with lava. That's why it's so red. How do we know about Venus when we can't see its surface? Well, astronomers are scientists who study objects in space. They use spacecraft to study Venus. A spacecraft is a machine that rockets to the other planets. Pretty cool. Now we're going to look at Earth, the place we all live. We live on the third planet from the sun. Our home is mostly covered with water. 
The land is made of rock and soil. It has mountains, valleys, and broad plains. Some of the land is always covered with ice. Nearly everywhere you look are living things, like we talked about in ecology. Ecology is the study of living things. Earth is home to millions of plants and animals. They live on the land, in the oceans, and in the air. This is a really cool snapshot of Earth from space. I thought it was really cool to see that. Look at all the water, the, all the blue. There's so much water that covers the Earth. Lots of air surrounds Earth. Winds blow white clouds across the surface. The clouds are made of water drops. Eventually, the drops fall as rain or snow. Water runs across the land and wears it away. Volcanoes spew out lava to make new land. Earth is constantly changing. Now we're looking at the moon, Earth's moon. That's actually an eclipse right here. It's a picture of an eclipse. One moon travels around Earth. It is called the moon. The moon is made of gray and black rock from volcanoes. Sunlight bouncing off the moon makes its surface look white. The moon's surface is pitted with millions of craters. The crater Cor Coper Copernicus, I can't say that, is 58 miles. It's very long. Can't say that word. It's all good. Mrs. Cummins is laughing at me. It's okay. We can do this. In 1969, the first humans set foot on the moon. They were called astronauts because they wore spacesuits containing air because the moon has no atmosphere. Astronauts brought back moon rocks. Astronomers study the rocks to learn how the moon was formed. There's the astronaut on the moon for the first time. Astronomers think the moon was created billions of years ago during a collision. An object the size of the planet Mars collided with Earth. Earth was smaller then. Most of the objects joining with Earth to make the biggest to make it bigger, but a chunk flew off. This became the moon. It has orbited or circled the Earth ever since. Now we're looking at the planet Mars. Here's a look, a picture of Mars. So Mars and Mercury are both red. You guys have probably heard a lot more about Mars. So Mars, the fourth planet from the sun, is reddish. Its surface is covered with rusty colored rock and dust. Mars has a giant canyon that makes Earth's Grand Canyon look tiny by comparison. The canyon on Mars is longer than the distance across the United States. Mars also has a very large volcano. The volcano Olympus, Mons, is three times higher than Mount Everest on Earth. Mars has a thin atmosphere surrounding it, but there is not enough air for humans to breathe. If you went there, you would have to wear a spacesuit to live. Jupiter, one of my favorite planets. Jupiter, the fifth planet from the sun, is the first of four giant planets. It is made of gas and is 11 times wider than Earth. Large clouds travel around Jupiter. The clouds are mostly orange and white. Winds blow the orange clouds in one direction and the white clouds in another. This makes Jupiter look like it has stripes. I think it's super pretty. So that's what Jupiter looks like. It's like orange and it has the white. And that's from the clouds. Jupiter has a huge storm that swirls like clouds in a hurricane on Earth. The storm is twice the size of Earth. Astronomers have given the storm on Jupiter a name, the Great Red Spot. Jupiter also has many moons orbiting it. Another fact you can use. Two of these moons are larger than the planet Mercury. Another moon has erupting volcanoes on its surface. Two other moons are ice covered with oceans of water beneath. Next planet is Saturn, which you guys see the rings around Saturn. That's how you remember what Saturn looks like. It's the one with rings around it. Saturn, also a giant gas planet, is the sixth planet from the sun. It has thousands of narrow rings circling it. The rings are made of rock, ice, and dust. They can be seen with telescopes from Earth. The other giant planets have rings too, but they are much smaller and harder to see. Saturn's clouds are the color of butterscotch. More than 30 moons orbit Saturn. 
Astronomers keep discovering more. One moon, Titan, is, a very, is very large. It is a few hundred miles wider than Mercury. Titan has a stronger gravity that holds on atmosphere, holds an atmosphere of gas. Smaller moons do not have enough gravity to hold atmospheres. The gas surrounding the, them escapes into space. Next planet is Uranus. The third giant planet is Uranus. It is the seventh planet from the sun. Uranus is four times larger than Earth. Chemicals in the air make the planet look green. Uranus is a sideways planet. It spins like all planets, but it's tilted on its sides. So that's what makes uh, Uranus a lot different than the other planets. For half of its orbit, Uranus's north pole points towards the sun. For the other half, the south pole points towards the sun. Neptune, last planet we're gonna be talking about. Neptune is the last of the giant planets and the eighth planet from the sun. Blue in color, color, it is about as large as Uranus. Neptune has storms like Jupiter, but they are smaller. Occasionally, high white clouds appear in Neptune's air. Winds blow them around the planet at speeds of over 1,200 miles per hour. That's Neptune. So I'm going to skip Pluto, even though Pluto is a dwarf planet, but we're not going to be using that as one of our planets. So it's no longer considered one of the planets, but it is a dwarf planet if you want to study it. Asteroids and comets. Two words that we talk about in our vocab. There is still more than our sol there is still more to our solar system. Thousands of asteroids orbit the sun. Some of these space rocks are hundreds of miles across. There are the size, others are the size of houses. Many asteroids or orbit the sun between Mars and Jupiter. Far beyond Pluto are billions of large balls of ice called comets. Remember, comets are made of ice and dust. Comets are usually a few miles wide. They orbit the sun very slowly. Sometimes a comet will be bumped by another object in space and the comet will fall toward the sun. The sun's heat starts melting the ice. A long white tail of gas streaks out for millions of miles, and we can see the tail from Earth. And that's what it would look like. Astronomers study the solar system for many reasons. They use tools like telescopes to look at the planets. They, see, they send spacecraft out to visit them. One reason they do this is to find out where the solar system came from. Astronomers think the sun the sun's family, started out as a great cloud of gas and dust in space. Gravity caused the cloud to fall into itself. Most of the cloud became the sun. Smaller clumps became the planets, moons, and comets. Another reason to study the solar system is to find out if we are alone. Is there another life? Is there life on another planet? None has been discovered yet. Someday astronauts will travel out to the planets. Mars will be the first. Building special cities on Mars will make it possible for people to live there. Then there will be life on other planets. Pretty interesting. So thank you guys for following along with the book. And I hope you guys learned more about maybe a planet that you're thinking of studying or something that you can add to your solar system workbook.